everybody, this is Gene Starwin 34 coming to you with a new Mario review. As you can see, this is Django Unchained. Now, coming in, it's hard to play no favorites to this movie considering my favorite, one of my favorite directors of all time is Quentin Tarantino. And of course, being an originally written and directed, it was more of the whatever I wished, really. He doesn't have a lot of movies out there, but what he always pushes out there is some of the best I've ever seen. I've seen Pulp Fiction. I've seen both of the Kill Bill movies. I've seen just almost everything you can think of. So really coming in it was hard not to like be a little bit ecstatic about it. So it's already gotten tons of raves and reviews but is it really worth all the praise and like over the top nonchalant just ass grabbing them at this point and I will give you my full two cents on it so coming in this starts off in kind of a grainy texture reminding you of his movies of Grindhouse and if anything his art style that he's been acclaimed to know at this point which it's not bad. It, it's his signature at this point. So you see the character played by Jamie Foxx, Django, being escorted with a good five other people, uh, slaves, by two men across wilderness, all kinds of terrain. And I guess it's to signify the hardships. And it's not that bad, but at the same time, it's something that's dragged out. But it's one of the few nitpicks at the beginning of the movie. They're greeted by uh, Christopher Waltz, who's Dr. King Schultz. Honestly, this is probably one of my favorite characters in the movie. I'm sorry, Calvin Candy or Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm sorry for Samuel Jackson, Jamie Foxx. They all did tremendous jobs, but this is my favorite character just because he's the egotistical, maniacal, cynical, yet over the top in toilishly childish character that's the mentor but at the same time still a tangible person something you can relate to if at least for my sake and what Schultz initially does is buy Django so that way he can get someone for a bounty and in that sense it's realistic it's not something that's just over the top it's not something like oh I need to rescue this man he's a prince no right off the bat he gives him the incentive and that is I need this guy so I can identify the people I'm after on a bounty and he buys him but at the same time he detests slavery so he treats Django as a real person within the first few minutes and the two men do not agree with this and without dragging on too long they within three or four shots the two men are taken care of one has a broken leg the other one's dead and ironically one of my favorite parts again is the he tells the rest of the slaves the North Star's over there you can do whatever you want best place in Mexico and just leaves them to whatever they want to do so in in the sense of I, irony the whole situation turns from the men being in charge or the man that's left being in charge is left to his wrongdoings and wrong treatings and you get that much of a symbolism and that's about it what you really take from this movie as far as it goes is that it's not overly like oh this is racism and this is how it was and everything it doesn't try to make anyone feel guilty it's if you could replace anyone in this movie or any race or any set any creed you can make everyone black and it would still make sense and that's what makes it so great yes of course there are some defining things that make it so it has to be within this time period but majority of it still feels to me like anything could have been replaced with it. And that's one of the things I liked about it. But moving on, as far as it goes, Schultz gets his bounty and asks what Django wants from his life now that he's free. And he wants to fight, find his wife, Brunhilde. And be, uh, Schultz being a romantic 
believes that he must help on this journey because he is actually a German and heard of the story of Hilda before, Brunhilde. So he believes that after everything is said and done that he must or at least wants to help Django and accomplish this. Throughout the whole story you find out that he, uh, she was sold to a, a very high-end a uh, um, slave trader named uh, Calvin Candy, who is played by Leonardo DiCaprio, and he's not over the top at all. He's actually very down to earth, but very cynical and very nefarious. But you can see him at, as someone that is not so bad. You, you see him as a businessman. You see him as someone who's actually just trying to make things work and. Again, that plays into the story. It plays very well. It doesn't give you the guilt. It gives you, this is what he does. This is his business. He is a mobster. You can replace him as a mobster. You can put him in the 1950s, and it would make perfect sense. And that's something about this movie that I loved. Is The story is very simple. The characters are very complex. And the plot is very defined. It was very hard to find any nitpicks. Yes, there were quite a bit in the fact that some of the developments or at least some of the shots and some of the things just didn't make sense. If anything, yes, to match the intensity of the character and to match the intensity of the situation, yes, but it was one of those shots that were holding shots, but they, again, if anyone knew Tarantino style, was essential. So, not without covering any more, you know the base of what the story is. Plot is fairly simple, predictable almost, with a few twists, of course, so that way you, you're still blown back on your heels. And characters are all defined, and Jamie Foxx gives a very stunning role in the fact that he does not try to take over the whole movie. He actually ebbs and flows with the characters. He involves himself, but doesn't over-involve himself. He doesn't try to make it about himself. And that's why this movie de deserves its nominations. And surprisingly, even though as a fan, I can say, as a, even an artist, as someone who's seen a lot of movies, that this is one that it's worth watching even for length because everything is a necessity everything is important there is nothing that's left behind the plots are closed very well together if anything there's one hole but even then it's one of those things that it's like once you get so involved in the movie the hole is there and you completely just jump over it but without saying any more I don't want to ruin it for you I hope you enjoy the movie and, and I guarantee you I will watch it again and I hope you enjoy it this is Gene Starlin 34 signing out